Hey everybody, your friendly neighborhood director of secondary English language arts here, Josh Flores, at the Oklahoma State Department of Education in the Office of Instruction. And today, we're going to talk about narratives. More specifically, we're going to go over some of the key elements to consider when preparing for the 8th grade writing assessment in case it is a narrative response. We'll have future videos covering the other writing modes, but let's start with narrative because it's fun. Now for this module, you're going to need a lot of coffee. There's going to be some things to print off that we'll have listed at the bottom, or at least underneath this video, wherever it's going to be housed. And we are going to break it up into four chapters, essentially, where we focus on the elements of the prompt, the elements of the rubric to assess the writing, and elements of reading, really just reading strategies that are specific to this type of response and of course elements of creating a story in order to include all the requirements listed here. So let's get started with a prompt. Now specifically we're going to take a close look at the practice prompt available at the Oklahoma State Department assessment materials page. It is uh, it's that prompt about like the railroads. Trains are awesome. Now when we look at it closely, there's really four components of the writing prompt. There is the part that identifies the mode, there is the part that identifies the task, it's like a specific verb, so it tells the student like really precisely how to respond, not just the mode to which to respond, but its format in which to respond to. And then you have your context, all those contextual details, so they really know how to frame their response through the narrative, and specifications some specific guidelines that must be included in their response. And so, in the case of the practice prompt, write a narrative that describes the experience of someone who is an early traveler on the transcontinental railroad. We have the mode right there at the front, write a narrative, and we are going to focus on descriptive detail because that's what the task highlights, is that we are going to describe. And the context for it, this kind of tells us how we're going to build a setting and our characters revolve all around being an early traveler on the transcontinental railroad. So we got our narrator slash character and our setting contained in the context. But there are some specifications that we need to pay close attention to too. Your writing should include a description of the railroad line, one, and two, as well as the character's feelings about traveling on the line. And of course, three, use information from both passages. Sounds easy enough, so let's list that out so we have a clear understanding and maybe it's easier to digest when you have all those requirements listed out. Now, not only is it important for students to be able to recognize those elements that go into the prompt so they can make a list and ensure that they hit each of these points in their response and they can even go back to that list and self-check after they write their response to ensure all these specifications are included. But as teachers, it's important to understand and recognize all of these elements so we can create our own practice prompt. Now, another option for creating a prompt is to check out this great resource provided by LDC.org or the Literacy Design Collaborative, which are just templates for creating rich writing tasks for the narrative mode, but also they have templates for expository and argumentative modes. Let's talk about rubrics. If you haven't yet, go ahead and visit the Oklahoma State Department of Education's Assessment Materials page and go download that 8th grade writing rubric. It'll be easier to follow along. Now the rubric has five categories that are being assessed in the final writing. And as you can see by the different percentages, they each hold different weights. Except for those last three here, word choice, sentence and paragraphs, grammar usage and mechanics. These categories only hold 15% weight of the entire grade. And, as an added bonus, they're the same for 8th grade as they are for 5th grade and vice versa. So when should you start using 
the rubric for word choice, sentence paragraphs, grammar usage, and mechanics on the first day of school in sixth grade, of course, right? Since essentially they are the same for fifth and eighth grade, why not go ahead and start incorporating them into your grading practices whenever you have students doing writing in sixth grade and seventh grade, and that way they have at least those components mastered. Because they are the same for both grade levels and for all three writing modes that can be assessed, we're gonna focus just on ideas and development and organization unity and coherence in order to break it up and make it more manageable, more digestible. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your department, you're gonna look at the rubric, what it says for ideas and development, and make sure you have a clear understanding of what is being assessed. So here we have it listed here. There's four bullet points in order to score a four, which is the top score for narrative. And that's nice, but we also wanna translate this into student-friendly terms so students are very clear on what's expected of themselves too, right? So just made a list out of some of the concepts here, going through and breaking it down. The content is appropriate for audience and purpose. So we got audience and purpose as a bullet point that's something we need to discuss extensively with our students. A real or imagined story or experience with a narrator and characters is fully developed using descriptive details. Well, we can condense that down and say, hey, you gotta have a plot. A context and point of view are clearly defined. So that really happens, the point of view happens through our narrator and characters. They really help build not only the setting, but the point of view. They help establish that when we have strong narrators and characters written in our story. And then of course, narrative techniques such as dialogue and description are used effectively to develop experiences, events, and their characters. Now it's not limited to dialogue and descriptions but that's what we're gonna kind of pinpoint that that was specifically mentioned. So we should probably have dialogue included somewhere in our response, as well as all the other narrative techniques that you can incorporate, like internal and external conflict. Now let's look at organization, unity, and coherence. Same situation we got here. We have the four bullet points taken from the score four part of the narrative rubric. And it says, introduction engages and orients the reader. Ah, so we have to have an introduction. Well, that's kind of a given. If you follow the basic plot line, you're gonna have an introduction and a conclusion. Well-structured event sequence unfolds in a natural and logical manner and moves the reader through, a, through the story or experience. Okay, so it has to follow a timeline, essentially, or plot diagram and a variety of transition signals shifts in time and settings and show relationships among experiences and events. Transitions. It has to have a natural flow of transitions and timeline uh, incorporated in there and of course conclusion. Beginning and end. Yeah. And we can put them all together by focusing on when these occur in example literary text that we present in our classroom. So whatever they're reading at the 8th grade level or 7th grade or 6th grade, whatever's part of your school's curriculum, be sure that they're pointing out examples of this so they can imitate it in their own writing. So grading a rubric. Of course, you could give them this. And that might be just fine enough, but maybe you wanna add more or maybe you wanna tweak it a little bit to the needs of your students. So that's where we gotta learn how to create our own rubric. And one tool to make this very easy is RubyStar. RubyStar.4teachers.org. It's a great one to just go in and you can create your own rubric from scratch or you can take multiple elements of writing and it has some pre, it has some pre-developed concepts to include in your rubric so you can build it and then tweak it based on the needs of your students on what you need to focus, what you notice that they need to work on more. As an example, if you're looking for a rubric to create uh, with your department something so you can have a a common rubric for grading, writing, vertically and horizontally in your district. You might take a gander at Edmond Public Schools rubrics page. They have rubrics for each writing mode, but they're also adjusted so they can be used not just for this eighth grade writing test, but also for seventh and sixth grade. Pretty cool. And it is very concrete. It's good for students that need something concrete to follow. I tell you, Take a look at that narrative rubric. If you follow this, it will give them a checklist 
on what types of sentences to incorporate, what types of figurative devices to incorporate. It's great practice if you want students to move from doing very simple sentences to start slowly practicing incorporating compound sentences. This kind of gives them a nice walkthrough for that, in addition to being a rubric in itself. So take a look at that, and I think it'll provide some good guidance when creating your own school or district writing rubric. Let's talk about reading. So reading in preparation to compose a narrative writing response for an assessment piece is going to be a little different than reading for pleasure or reading for elongated periods of time in the class. So because of time constraints, we really need to equip our students with strategies to read different when taking an assessment so they utilize most of their time not struggling to comprehend the text, but spend more of their time organizing their writing and their thoughts for the actual narrative piece, right? So a couple things to pinpoint. We're going to take a look at the prompt, go back and review that, and look at those specific details where it says it has to incorporate relevant details from the passages. And when we take those elements of the prompt and the rubric, we can kind of pinpoint exactly what our students need to pay attention to while reading those passages in order to compose a narrative essay. So details were really the big focus. So as they read, they're going to pay attention to details of the setting and those descriptive details that they can use to create their own setting. That's not all they need to pay attention to as they read. Obviously, first and foremost, they have to identify what is the topic of these passages. What is the overall topic being discussed? And when they have that identified, then they can start looking for that domain-specific vocabulary, that topical vocabulary, those vocab words that don't make sense unless it's pertaining to that topic. We're going to go to this tried and true method, always super dependable, always super easy. Circle, underline, and star. So as students read, we're going to ask them to circle, underline, and star very specific things in the passages so they can pull that out and use it when composing their own narrative. Because essentially what they're doing here is they're, they're, they're like professional authors. When a professional author wants to make a believable piece, they go do research in order to bring some realism into their pieces. So you know, like Stephanie Meyer, she actually went and moved to Oregon and fell in love with a vampire for some time so she could bring real detail into those, those vampire books. J.K. Rowling, she actually went and learned magic tricks and then brought some of that realism into that, that one series of books that she wrote. Indian in the Cupboard that actually went and, I'm just kidding, anyways. So we're gonna tell students because it is so important to include specific details to circle those domain specific vocabulary words or topical vocabulary so they can maybe reuse some of those words eloquently in their narrative. Like in this transcontinental railroad prompt, they might use terms like railroad line, caboose, engine, track. Then of course they're going to underline specific setting details that really stand out, really descriptive details that all the details that hit the senses. And of course right off the back they're going to put a star next to the topic or topic sentence. That way they stay focused when they're composing their own narrative. Like, oh yeah, I got to make sure that this, I'm constantly focused on trains. Trains and then of course details about how the character feels about the train, right? Now you can't really do this when taking the test, but if you're practicing the circle underline star method, then the last step in class is you want to do a quick formative assessment to check their understanding of what they read, you're going to want to discuss it. Either tell them to think, pair, share, turn to a partner, tell them and share with them exactly what they circled, underlined, and starred, or summarize it in their own terms to a partner, or do it as a whole class. But as long as they're discussing what they read and annotated, then that's a good check for understanding for you to do. You can go around and listen to them. Final chapter. Let's talk about story structure. Okay, so we've done all this prep work. We know what's required. We have a good understanding at least of what's required. We have this research that we've done 
in the two passages. And now we're going to put it all together and think about, well, how can I respond in a narrative format? Well, let's look about the elements of the story. There's really four broad elements that we got to keep track of. We have to have character or characters. We have to have a setting and we have to have dialogue and it all has to be mixed in together and put into a nice fluid plot. So how do we practice that with students? Well, a basic plot structure, when complete, should be able to fill in the somebody wanted but so strategy. The somebody is the narrator or main character. You should be able to describe what they wanted, their motivation, as well as the obstacle, the but, the obstacle that got in the way, and the so, the resolution. So that requires there to be a main character, a conflict to push the plot along, and of course the overcoming of an obstacle, which also goes into conflict, and that so ties it all together with the conclusion. So if they can somebody wanted but so a story, and that's a good self-check for them to do after they write their own pieces. But it's also a good summarization strategy for them to practice with uh, you know, some of the stories that they read in class. If you take a look over at AchieveTheCore.org, there's lots of great student samples and a narrative prompt that you can turn around and use as another practice prompt in your classroom. And so here's the sample they have. You get two copies of it. You get a copy where it has teacher annotations, and then you get a blank copy so you can give that to the students and have them analyze. You might also consider giving them a copy of the rubric and having students use those to grade it themselves. Would they give this a score of a four, a three, a two, a one? Why? But what we want to do with it is practice our somebody wanted but so, a self-check. After reading this piece, The Daydreams of a Migrant Mother, keep in mind that this is an eighth graders sample paper, but it's still a good piece to show students. Pause for a second and read it, and then we'll do a somebody wanted but so together. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, so that was depressing. So what's nice about this is that it incorporates Oklahoma in it, and there are some Oklahoma slang terms that students might be familiar with. Do you see the word Okies? What do you think that falls under? Well, it falls under some of that topical vocabulary, right? So somebody, who was the somebody? It was Ma, she was also the narrator. Ma, what did she want? She wanted, and it says it specifically in there, in on the uh, first page, I just really want the best for my family. But, I mean specifically, she goes into detail, or you could assume that she, you could infer she went into some detail that the best for her family was at least a roof over the head and a meal. But, what was the problem? There was no work. So, what was the eventual resolution there at the end? It wasn't a nice one. It was they were hungry and didn't know when their next meal would come from. So that fits the somebody wanted but so. And you can go read the expert graders notations on that if you go download the full prompt where you see their narrations off to the side. And a full breakdown right here. Right here. And that concludes this PD on your plan module covering the elements of narrative writing for the eighth grade writing assessment. Uh, we will do another follow up for the expository mode and then of course the argumentative persuasive mode in the future. But please keep checking back, stay in touch, check out that one pager that gives you just an overview of well, hopefully answers to the most common questions about the writing assessment. And uh, if you have any questions, please email me or you can email my BFF, Amy Nykar, in the Office of Assessment to get answers on that. And until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your students, and take care of each other. I'm Josh Flores, and I'll talk to you later.